Hello, viewers and artists and all alike to the Art Lounge Alley. This is Coloring Comics. And this is um, what I'm going to be working with tonight. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit more work here um, before I move on to the next panel. And to be honest, maybe I'm going to do a little bit more work on his skin color because I feel like it's blotchy. You know, there are certain areas that have a lot. Uh, there's areas that don't have much. Um, so I might just take a little bit of time to, to improve on that, to make it look better. Um, and then I'm going to move on. Let's see where the next one is. Ooh, that's... It might be a bit of an issue. I might end up having to just ink because I'm pretty much done with most of them. Nope, still plenty to go. Still got three more. And then I have to start inking. Uh, which kind of brings it up to um, another topic. Uh, and I think uh, this is something that I've been thinking about. Um, recently because this brush pen that I have is, is posing a bit of a problem. You know, I have to wash it often. It dries up, you know, it gets pretty gunky. And then when I wash it, it, uh, it becomes watered down. And then having to refill it, you know, opening this, this up, uh, doing all that work to refill it as opposed to just using a brush. You know, just using one of these, dipping it in, in some ink and and working with the brush and get better at it, uh, which also is going to help with with coloring as well. It's going to improve my uh, my precision for colors. Um, just kind of turning back to a more simple approach because um, recently I acquired a, an awesome book. Um called um, John Buscema, The Michelangelo of Comics. Um, and it's about like close to 200 pages uh, just talking about John Buscema, talking about people's experiences with him and his development. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so happy I got a copy of it. Uh, I encourage you guys to get one as well if you're a fan. Even if you're not, um, it's still a really interesting insight into the whole process for for the artist uh, that they go through and you get to see some beautiful work like some originals some uh, uh, inked versions um, and just talking about um, let me start adding these colors as I'm talking to you guys about it um, yeah just you know talking about that uh, seeing John Buscema do some inking you know there's been videos that I've that recently surfaced uh, that documented him uh, inking uh, drawing and inking and I was completely blown away. I was so happy to to know that there is records of him Doing that kind of stuff, you know way before Instagram and all this stuff came about um, But yeah, it just shows him using a regular brush like this and he's just like quickly, you know uh, inking away all these different sections making these very thin um, meticulous lines using a brush just a regular brush nothing fancy um, and I thought you know why not if he could do that you know if it's possible to actually do uh, to do that um, just do it you know it's it's sim it's more simple in a lot of ways it's a lot easier to just clean up um, this little brush tip here as opposed to having to do this whole like shebang. Uh, this I think is probably more useful for um, probably like demonstrations or something, you know, when you're doing it on, on a board and you can't hold like a little thing of ink in your hand, you just have the ink inside and you could just, um, just continuously work on something. But if you're in a table setting, you know, where you have space to actually have inks and such why not you know why not just use a regular brush pad or a regular brush that is 
and it kind of like falls into like what I want to do anyways, you know, just disconnect from all sorts of stuff that's um, really tech oriented, you know, getting caught into this like endless upgrades and, uh, you know, material this and that and the other and just kind of rely on simplified things and focus on what's really what it's really meant for is like creating and the process of painting and the process of drawing um having to focus beyond that as opposed to you know uh, equipment and all that other stuff there's a point i think there's just like a fine line um you know not to say that material isn't important because it absolutely is as i mentioned when it comes to sketchbooks right the kind of paper oh my god i'm giving myself a heart attack shaking it over this comic um it does it does play a certain role like the sketchbook and the kind of paper that you're using you know if it's thick or thin depending if you're using wet me medium you know as you see me uh using all this stuff like watercolor and india inks and such it does play as a, an important role but at some point it just crosses over into capitalistic endeavor of like brainwashing you to just consume more and more stuff you know where it's just like oh now it's more simple we got things like gogurt where you can't even eat a yogurt it has to be on the go you know like that sort of bullshit um rather than giving people actually humane hours where they don't have to have a go-gurt they're trying to make it fun for you to like run to your job to work your entire day there you know as opposed to like yeah we're gonna give you more hours of the day so you're happy and that you're willing to come in and do good work like now modern day capitalism is like we don't even care whether you do whether you're happy or not we just want capital which is to say how sociopathic things have gotten. You know, it's just like intolerance for anything other than money. It's, and I think, again, this is something that I talk about very frequently. It's a sickness. It's, uh, it's a disorder and um, people are just enabling it more and more by not pushing back. So yeah, just the idea of like having to con buy more and more stuff, like it just crosses over to just being, you know, excessive. But um, yeah, if back in the day they were able to do all this stuff using a brush pen and all this like simple material, then that's where I'm, I'm going to be uh, working towards myself. So I'm going to... Maybe I should just start off with the skin, which is like a little bit of brown, brown. Sorry, it's the wire, I guess on the mic. It's getting a little wonky. Um, yeah, we're gonna get a little brown there. It looks like there's some brown, yellow, and a little bit of red. And I forget that actually it works well with um, well India inks don't, don't seem to be as um, I'm gonna say as thick like I'm able to actually just cover go over these um, these black lines and they're still visible now, it could be because I have a little bit of water still on the brush from cleaning it. Um, I'm going to mix more of this so I don't have to keep dipping, dipping it back.
two brown. Let's see if we water it down a little bit. Say maybe a little yellow. I'm not too opposed to it because I think um, the previous color was well it dried. So, and a little bit of wa uh, water actually helps. Like as you saw, the first, the initial um, drop of color or brush stroke, rather, was pretty dark or vibrant. But adding a little bit of water. Now I am risking. Um, warping the paper a little bit but I think that because I have um, another layer be underneath it uh oh I'm starting to add my own element into this which I'm not really interested in doing right now interested in getting it down as I see it. I don't want his lips to be any different in color, but it looks like I'm going to have to darken up other areas. But yeah, just adding a hint of water, like just a tiny droplet. Uh, allows the colors to be a little bit more diluted and more transparent which isn't something that I saw with watercolor like watercolor has a little bit more of a pasty quality to it so even if you add water it still will cover up um, the black lines and the black details which is a, which is driving me a bit nuts just a little bit because um, the, you know, it just left so many areas with these like white marks, borders, because I, I, I was trying to like paint around them to keep the detail around. But with this little trick, I'm actually able to retain, um, retain some color in those details. Yeah, see, like, I put in a lot of... Well, I put, like, multiple colors on the forehead. So it's like this section right here is really... I don't know, it kind of looks like a scab on his head or something. I could... I put, like, too thick of a layer on there. And it feels even more, um... Glossy. I'm going to say, or more slippery as I'm adding these colors. There's a part of me that's really enjoying um, the difference, though. Like, uh, that the colors kind of vary a little bit. Uh, 
I think that's my part. That's uh, that's part of me that really enjoys uh, Dean Cornwell's paintings as well. For those of you who uh, are new, I've been doing a special stream talking about Gil Elfgren, who was an amazing painter. Um, he was he was a huge influence on a lot of illustrators, um, and. I've been doing a special stream all talking about his influences, people who have influenced him, and Dean Cornwell is one of them. Um, in fact, Dean Cornwell was such a well-renowned artist and painter uh, that that a lot of other artists, um, including John Buscema, were familiar with and actually liked his work. wire is very sensitive all, all of a sudden to correct this so uh, even though it does look good and it would actually have more color like the lips would have a little bit more color I still want to nail it and uh, be as consistent to the original as possible Now my colors are a little bit more brown than the original. The original seems to have um, kind of like a yellowish, I'm gonna say, tint to it. So maybe I could, maybe I could pass another layer on top of all of this. That's more accurate. say it's kind of closer to this. But, uh, but Dean Cornwell's paintings just had like a multitude of colors within the skin color. And I think like Howard Pyle also had that in his paintings as well. It just shows such like uh, great understanding of color mixture that you could, there's like a certain sophistication to their color mixing. Um, that showed like proficiency with with paint and mixing colors as opposed to just using like one solid color and that's it and I'm pretty sure um, well I'm 100% I'm positive that um, Norman Rockwell did the same thing like if you look at his paintings and you look at uh, the, the complexity of the colors within like, let's say their hands even, just their hands. You could see a, a vast amount of uh, different colors mixed in. And looking at all these painters, I'm actually like curious to know um, whether a contemporary artist who I'm actually not sure if he's still around or not. Um, his name is uh, Sigmund Freud. 
not the psychologist, but uh, his, I think it's his nephew or something. I have, his, I have his book. Let me just grab it real quick, actually. Let me see if I have the book. I can bring it up as an example. Okay, I was wrong. It's Lucian Freud, but uh, they are related. Uh, Sigmund Freud and Lucian Freud, they're, um, they are related. But yeah, I think in his paintings, and I think more so his later work, tends to have that like color complexity. Like if you look at that, this one is very popular. Oh no, it was this one. This one was very popular. But yeah, there's like lots of different colors uh, used in his paintings. It is explicit material, y'all, but you know, this is about art. So you guys should be mature about it. It's about the human body. It's understanding it. So yeah, you're going to see some nudity. But not, I mean, this is more stylized, I think. I think Dean Cornwell really, and Norman Rockwell really um, highlight more of like what I'm talking about and the complexity of colors. Like, this is more of, like, um, I'm going to say Impressionism combined. Um, than it is. But, um, you guys should keep an eye out for the special stream. I'm going to continue, um, talking about them. Um, talking about all these other artists as well. So, um, I'm up to part four. You guys can check out part one three one through uh, three by heading over to uh, the video section and the twitch channel and filtering the videos based on collection which is going to open up uh, the folders for you and and there you will find the um, highlights folder which has all the special streams that i've had throughout the art lounge alley ever since it launched i believe it's been like four months now actually um, yeah, and over there you'll find parts one to three, where I talk about all these different artists and show you guys their beautiful work. I'm, I'm a, a little bit on the fence about Lucian Freud's uh, paintings. I don't know. There's something about them. Like, it's still, it's great work, it's beautiful paintings, but, eh, I don't know. I guess I have to dig a little bit deeper uh, within myself to, like, find out what is it that I like and don't like. I do enjoy it to some extent, but I think it's, there's something, like, grotesque about his color use, or even just, like, his subject matters, or how he tries to um how he tries to portray them i don't know or just like the vibe you know there's just like a certain level of i'm gonna say apathy there like it's it's they're kind of like all displaying a sense of like apathetic expression whether it's their body language or um, 
you know the face expressions that they have on there and that's maybe that's his thing like that's what he's trying to have people recognize or see and just that alone i think is i guess um noteworthy you know whether it's invoking frustration which is what i'm getting from it um so i guess in some ways it does have its um he does have a certain value to it and it isn't it's not like it's not skilled or anything like he doesn't have any skill or um you know ability or a certain connection to to um to people and their expressions and so on like he definitely has that he's able to really capture that well and portray that through his paintings so i'm not against it i don't know It's definitely good art. Is it is he my favorite painter? No, I'm gonna say not. But I do like it. And I, I like it for that. I, I like it for the fact that it invokes that sort of uh, reaction for me. And I start thinking about it and then, you know, I get a little frustrated with the idea of like apathetic sort of um, existence or whatever just being totally indifferent to anything and everything and just being bored with life you know that whole like come on i think there's a certain level of pompousness to be bored with life like there's so much going on there's so much that can be done there's so much to learn um and improve and grow and all that other stuff for somebody to be apathetic about it is just I don't know, something bratty about that. No, I don't enjoy. But that's how I feel about it. You know, that's what, and that's actually what makes it a good painting because it makes me think about that topic. It makes me form my opinion on it. And I encourage you guys to do that for yourselves as well. What's your opinion on it? Now, it could have been that he just captured a trajectory, you know, at a point, a period in, in time, but I'm going to say apathy has been around for a very, very long time, and it's not something that is a period, you know, as if though it goes away eventually. I think it just probably it could be heightened by a certain time, you know, depending on what's going on politically or economically or whatever it is. Uh, it could probably spread more to people. Um, but he could have he could have just captured that moment. You know, it, it, it comes in waves, I'm going to say. It comes and goes in waves. And there are periods where it comes back, where that sense of apathetic approach to existence comes back and... Then it goes away, then it comes back, and so on and so forth. Alright, I think I did enough on this guy. Uh, I did cover up a lot of things I didn't like. Um, I love that panel. I absolutely love the original one. I still, I could still see a difference. There's like m lots of differences between... Um, how Basema laid it down. But uh, it, it was a lot of fun just bringing it to life. Like that again. Um, I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go on to the boot now. Of this guy right here. There's still some, there's a little bit of work to be done. Um, and I think that's what I was trying to do 
At the very beginning, I was like, why did I dip my pen? Why did I dip my brush in green? And now I, I recognize that. It's because his boot is green and yellow. More yellow than green. It's a little bit of that, but I think there's like a dab of brown in there too. It's a dab of brown. And I'm going to use a little bit of water to water it down. No, too green. Way too green. But a good experiment because... Like, if I use a little bit of white. Yeah, you see that? How it turns the, the black detail milky? Whereas if I used it, if I just used uh, the colors, the yellow and the green, there was no problem. The moment I add white into the game, it starts to take on this, like pasty sort of texture and detail is in danger and I have to like go around everything so there's like it's like brown yellow and I already have some green on my brush so maybe maybe that's gonna do it Kind of. Not really. I think I have to just continue to add a little bit of... A little bit of white. And I think the real solution is going to be for me to just have to uh, come back with with black ink, which is fine, because as I was talking about it, I am going to start practicing inking using a brush, not not that brush pen that you guys have been witnessing me using. complicated and I think a lot of the complication is again uh, something that I was talking about before and actually the very first episode of uh, coloring comics where I give you guys examples of what they used to do uh, back in the day back in the 30s um, to mass produce comics and what how they colored them so it's kind of like pointillism what they did was they just brought color dots uh, next to each other to create the illusion, you know, it seems to be the theme today, um, uh, an optical illusion. When those colors are next to each other, uh, they, they create a new color, a different type of color. So I'm kind of seeing a little bit of those, I guess. I'm like seeing a little bit of uh, the red, the green, and the brown, and the yellow, how they're all combined together to create this sort of texture. I'm not like 
I guess I'm not like seeing the color as a whole. And my eyes like darting to the, these little details about it. I just say the color is like a warm green. And the belt is an interesting color. It's like, there's like a little bit of red that I'm seeing there. I don't know. I might have to just like drop my expectation of getting it down exactly because it's a different technique. Since I'm, I'm seeing like all these other colors. Trying to see if I'm ready to move on to the next uh, panel. If there's more stuff for me to to correct here, and I see one. I mean, um, I think I just have to work a little bit more on these panels to get the colors right, because that's not right. It looks very much like the background, whereas his clothes are. Closer to like a yellow as opposed to a green. So let me see if I could do a little adjustment here. Let me see if I could change it around. If anything, this is closer than what it is now. I'll be honest, I, I am liking this music. This is a very interesting choice uh, by, by Pretzel. Right on Pretzel. This reminds me, actually, I think the reason why is because it reminds me of this very cool film. Let me say that again. <laughs> it reminds me of a very cool film called um, Run, Lola, Run. It's like this German film. Um, but very cool, very cool scenes. And the reason why I'm saying bet is because it's, it's not in English, so you would have to 
it, it's a movie in subtitles uh, if you if you don't speak German. Um, and I usually like watching it in subtitles because I, I don't like the dubbed versions. The voices are always off, or it's just not synced in with the lips, and just takes um, takes me out of the experience. I mean, there's like obvious. Um, elements that just kind of break that experience of being in the scene with them. So if you guys do watch it, I encourage you guys to watch the original with no, uh, not dubbed with subtitles, but very cool movie, very stylistic. And the music is really cool as well. Um, interesting concept. So I encourage you guys to check that out. All right. So what I have to, what else I have to fix? I have to fix. Um, well, I got a color in his hand and give him a skin tone. Give the hand a skin tone. kind of have already. orange I think what really helps sometimes is adding a little bit of blue to to give um, to give the skin some um, natural tone okay. otherwise it's like too orange and adding more white uh, just makes them look pale I'm gonna sit with that for a minute going to continue on this gentleman's face. Well, he's not a gentleman. He's everything other than that. He's a nut job. Uh, but I'm going to have to paint this nut job. And I'm going to paint his beard. A Viking. Something that John Buscema is excellent at drawing. Um, in that book that I was mentioning earlier, uh, John Buscema, the Michelangelo of comics, there's some examples of his uh, sketchbooks. There's some, not examples, there, there's like pieces from his sketchbooks and there, there are several where he does Vikings. And it looks so cool. And that's just like one of... Um, the many books that are available, actually. There's another one that's also really good. And I noticed that the price for them is ridiculous. I wonder if that's something new. Because I do remember looking them, uh, looking these books up before, and I don't remember them costing $500. That's one that I don't own currently. Um, Michelangelo... Um, Michelangelo... Busema, the Michelangelo of comics was pretty pricey uh but the other one that i mentioned 500 it's like 550 dollars now and it's a thick book uh, i did see some previews for it so it's well worth it there's some beautiful um examples there and you guys can check them out on youtube which i think is great you know because first of all 
you previewing it is not the same as owning it. Owning it, you could always open it up, you could look at it, you could continuously feel inspired by it, it's yours to keep. Previewing it, I think, is incredibly useful because then people could see, like, what to expect. You know, it would suck to spend all that money and then just, like, uh, open it up and it being totally the opposite of what you, uh, what you wanted. But anyways, there's like a, a YouTube video where a guy is like flipping through talking about uh, these books. So if you guys are looking to purchase them, I would suggest um, getting inspired by looking because they're all worth it. I mean, I look through all of them. They're all great. If you're a fan of John Buscema, you're pretty much going to love all of them that are available because they they go into not only extensive detail about his work and give you guys like a lots and lots and lots of images. Um, but yeah, they give you good history as well, like things that aren't um, out on the internet for the public eye to see. All right, everybody, I am going to have to wrap it up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to squeeze a little bit of black and do some corrections here and there. So I'm not going to get, wh where I'm getting at is I'm not going to get to start a new uh, panel today. It's just going to be dedicated to like fixing little, little bits of this and that. Fret not, I will be back again tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to be streaming the project stream, which is going to, you guys are going to get to see some, uh, there's a lot of progress that's been made actually. It's coming closer and closer to being finished. I'm going to say it's like 80% finished now, maybe 85. I don't know. Um, but definitely 80% finished. Um, I've been doing a lot of color tweaking, doing a little bit of changes with the line work. Pretty excited about it, actually. Um, and then Friday is going to be a special stream, and it's not going to be the continuation of Gil Elfgren. That's going to be next week. Uh, it's going to be a new uh, special intro to celebrate the 100th... Um, stream of figure drawing basics so at 8 p.m eastern standard time on friday there's going to be a special intro it's a it's a short film it's not as short as um, the films that i created it's not five minutes it's going to be a little bit more than that but it's not going to be for the entire stream i'll say that uh it's going to be a lot of fun i love this film it's uh, it's also going to be uh mature content so it's nc17 gonna throw that out now for you guys um but it's a philosophical concept it's beautiful animation uh great work all around great message um yeah i can't wait to watch it with you guys as well and that's gonna be friday 8 p.m eastern standard time so make sure you check back in then if you can't make it tomorrow uh for a reminder um well anyways thanks for tuning in everybody i hope you enjoyed the stream as much as i did i had a blast uh, talking about all this stuff um, the previous stream and the stream. Um, and if you guys enjoy this content, just make sure you remember to hit that like and subscribe button. They both are greatly appreciated. Uh, all right, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow and enjoy the rest of your night.